Okay, in this one, this, these examples, we have not only incomplete, but we might also have wrong free body diagrams. So, let's look at these examples. Again, please, please try these examples on your own. Okay, try to see what is wrong with them or how they're incomplete. And, and then see how I do it. So here we have a lawn roller of mass M being pushed up an incline, so it's going up. So what's what a what how, what's the free body diagram look like? Well, we've got the force P, and what's happening with this mg? That needs to go down, right? So this mg is wrong; it needs to point to the center, right down. And then uh, this incline, it doesn't say whether this is smooth or rough but if we assume that it's smooth then there's only a normal force um, if it was rough then there needs to also be a frictional force okay but it doesn't say here but the the main problem here is this mg is needs to be pointing down okay a pry bar lifting body a having a smooth surface there and the bar that's the bar, rest on a rough horizontal surface. Okay, so what is the, the body? Is the, the, the bar is the body that we want to isolate. And remember, what, what are the forces acting on the body? So yes, we have this, um, this object, this body A, that's applying R because it's a, it's a, um, a smooth surface, so there's no friction. So there's no horizontal force, so this is correct. P is correct, right? That's given. And what, what about here? What's happening here? There are two problems here. Can you identify the two problems? First, the normal force, this, that force there, is the force that the, the bar is exerting on its surroundings. But a free body diagram is... What are the surroundings exerting on the body? So this needs to be changed direction. And then it's also rough surface, so there needs to be a friction force there as well. Okay. Number three, a uniform pole of mass M being hoisted into position by a winch. Okay. Uh, horizontal supporting surface notched to prevent slipping of, of pole. What is a notch? Say there's a surface there, right? You um, machine or you you drill or you cut or a little little kind of a V-shaped hole into the surface so that you can put something in there so that it doesn't move side to side or, or vertically for that matter. So is this correct? Well, yes, it, the R is correct, but because this notch also resists motion from side to side, we need to also put in a RX there, and that's an RY maybe. And then the MG is correct, and the tension in the cable is correct. All right, we've got um, an angle bracket that's att attached to another member, and they are attached via pin joints. Okay, and... We, in this specific example, we just want to isolate this member and see what are the forces acting on this member. This is a pin connection, a pin connection. And so we just isolate. Do you see that we, we only look at what is directly happening to this member? We don't care about this force here. We don't care about this, whatever's happening here. We only care about what is directly affecting this member. And what's directly affecting it is is this position and this position, and of course there are pin connections. So you need you need a by and a bx. You need an ay and an ax. All right, bent rod welded to a support at A, so it's welded. And subjected to two forces and a couple. 
All right, so this is given. These are given, you just redraw them in. But what is missing here or wrong here? Well, remember, if you've welded something, then it is, it's a fixed support, right? It's the same as a, a beam being put inside uh, like a concrete wall or bolted or something like that. So you need to also include a X and a couple. Okay. Great.